what's up people it's T on Fast nineteen and I'm back to do a video and I'm here to talk about the curse of Cleveland, you know they still the curse has been continuing still and it's gonna happen regardless. I mean it's happened last night. Well, I'm not gonna say it yet, but I'll say it right now anyways. And I'm gonna say the top fifteen well I should say top sixteen things that Cleveland has actually got a curse on you know of losing you know what I'm saying all right the 2007 um ALCS championship game in the in the AL championship game the the Boston Red Sox big, big, um you know they were three one and they eliminated the um, Cleveland Indians and. That's one day um Boston Red Sox ended up winning a super um, you know, World Series that same year when they after they eliminated the Cleveland Indians. And believe it or not, LeBron James was in one of these games I believe LeBron was in when he had took out the Indians hat and threw it away and got the Yankees hat. Nah, that wasn't it. But yeah, I know what you mean. Alright. Number 14 is when Drew Carey is hired to hired to replace Bob Barker and the Price is Right. Okay, there, this is, has nothing to do with the sports curse, but it has surely made people hate Cleveland even more than they do. Funny thing, Drew Carey got inducted or WWE Hall of Fame, which they don't supposed to do, and they actually hired, you know, they actually inducted him in Hall of Fame. He only made one appearance in WrestleMania, so... In um, Royal Rumble of 2001, and that's about it. Okay, number 13 is Carlos Boozer leaving the Cavaliers. Reason why he left because he didn't see himself himself in the future in Cleveland, and that's why they brought LeBron James in there. And they still had Big Z in it, and Boozer said he wanted to leave Cleveland, and that's why when LeBron was taking away his spotlight, so he decided that Cleveland was not the place to be for him. All right, number twelve. Well, yeah, number twelve. When the wild the, the the NFL wild card playoff game, when the Browns faced the Steelers, the Browns were up by twenty four to seven, and then the Steelers they had three minutes left in the clock, and then the Steelers, you know, they were up by from thirty three on twenty one, but they you know what happens next? The, the Steelers came back, and they scored, they were thirty two twenty eight, and then. That's when the Steelers won. The Browns continue to fail a playoff run. And number number eleven was Jim when Big Jim Tomey remember was the greatest Cleveland Indian of all time, but they didn't have enough money to keep him around, so he decided to go to the Cardinal no wait. To the um was it the Phillies, yeah, he ended up going to the Phillies, went to World Series there. And that's one of the reasons, you know, Cleveland Indians are there in the downfall. Not just Cleveland Indians, Cleveland in general, but uh, sports teams. All right, number 10 is the 2001 Super Bowl 35, when the Baltimore Ravens win the Super Bowl. The original Cleveland Browns, the original Cleveland Browns is the Baltimore Ravens and the winning Super Bowl leaving Cleveland. Wow, that hurts big time. And, you know, Cleveland Browns, you know, they've been going through a lot in their career, you know, in their organization. And Cleveland is not the city for for the Brown, for the Ravens, the original Browns. And they won a Super Bowl there. All right, number nine. The year 2000 when the Indians couldn't sign, um, resign on Manny Ramirez. He was the, Manny was the newest member of the 500 home run club and will be remembered as one of the greatest right hand hitters in the history of baseball. But guess what? He won to the World Series, then won in the Indians, and he had the winning two in the world on the Boston Red Sox. And it's a sad day for Cleveland when they let him go. It's one of the sad, saddest reasons why they let go of Manny Ramirez, you know, he won two World Series, he was in the 500 club, he just got in there that year, and that's sad for the Cleveland fans right there, they really hurt big time. Oh yeah, number eight was the 97 
World Series win. When Jose Mesa actually, um, when the Marlins would have, they was in the, in the, the middle of the base, he would have got the ball, but he dropped the ball, he blew. And that's when the Marlins in the 11th inning, the Marlins were leading. And they were 2 and 1 to start in the 9th inning. Then he came, you know, he disappointed the, the team. That's when the Marlins ended up winning World Series. And there you go. Number seven, the November '95 R. C. E. model, when the Cleveland Browns sold the team to Baltimore, and they renamed it to the Baltimore Ravens. And Browns fans were mad and pissed. They were throwing bottles everywhere. And I remember watching the videos of the Browns, you know, going at it, going crazy. The fans, they were not happy how the way the organization was going, throwing bottles and everywhere. You know, that was the bottle gate right there. And yeah, Browns were hurt big time. All right, the '95 World Series in Cleveland were arguably the great, the greatest lineup on paper of all time. They win 100 regular season games. They lose, they win 30 games, and they end up losing. They end up losing to the Atlanta Braves in '95. Wow, they were the best team in the AL that year, and they end up losing against the Atlanta Braves. Wow, that's crazy, man. Uh, something going on with that team. All right, number five was the, the one of the most famous NBA playoff game in 1989 with the shot that Michael Jordan did in 3.2 seconds when Michael Jordan tried to begin a drive trying to shoot the ball. He shot it, made it, bang, Bulls win, Bulls win, Bulls win. And that's when Jordan, you know, eliminated the Cavaliers. All right, number four was the 1988 AFC Championship game, the fumble. Um, one one whole year after leading, after Elway lead his team, to, um, the team entire to drive, the AOC championship. So they were down by, they were down by 38 to 31, and that's when they they could have won that game. The Browns um had uh, Ernest Reiner fumble the ball. They turned the ball over to the to the three yard line, give the game to the Broncos and that's when the Broncos won. They could have had a tight game that would have went overtime that game. But the Broncos ended up winning the AFC Championship to advance to the Super Bowl back to back. Alright, another one. That's the number three. The A the AFC Championship game, the drive when Elway was when they were having, you know, when the Browns were leading um twenty to thirteen, the Broncos actually came back and away through the ball and he actually threw in and then he did. He went for a deep pass and did the touchdown. And then went overtime, and then it was a field goal. And they made a touch. And they made a field goal. It was good. And that's when they eliminated the Cleveland Browns once again. All right. Number two was the AFC playoff game. And right, red right, 88. Red right, 88. The cardiac kids in 1981. They were loudly 3-3, but it's strict. Was um, finished the season with Brian Stiff. The MVP of the 1980-81 season had lead the Browns on a kind of miracle win, the awesome year. In the first round of the playoffs, he, he has been able to pull a miracle against the Raiders. The play he has, he was right. The play was Matt to pass the touchdown, and then the Browns, the Browns end up getting an interception by the Oakland Raiders, and that's when the Raiders won, and they end up advancing to the Super Bowl. And that's what happens. All right, the number one, number one, well, uh, I say the number one was the catch in 1954 World Series. Wow, this happened since 1954. Wow, that's how long. The catch in the eighth inning was 40, 450 feet straight to the center field when Willie Mays made the over, the over the catch, the prevent, prevented any runs from being scored. The Cavs will set the tone and the series was over and the Cleveland Indians proceeded to sweep by the New York Giants of baseball. Okay. That's one of them, but I'm gonna give you a bonus. And this is big. Number one, that is like my bonus. One of the Cleveland curses when LeBron James made his decision and took his time to South Beach and ended up going to the finals of that team and then a year later the Miami Heat won it last night against 
uh, Oklahoma City Thunder and LeBron finally got the NBA Finals in a Miami Heat uniform. Not in Cleveland. They lost. He lost all four straight in Cleveland. He was swept. But in the Miami Heat, he actually won the NBA Finals MVP. And he won 4-1. That was the, their record, 4-1. And that's when LeBron James, you know, succeeded finally in the city of Miami. Didn't want in Cleveland. Alright guys, I want to know what y'all think. LeBron James, MVP, in Miami, not in Cleveland. Could have done it in the NBA Finals. But I'm out. Peace. Later.